to the Happy Place, aka the Madhouse, aka the Max Wrestling Podcast, episode 286. This is your captain speaking, along with Mike Larkin, El Jefe, and the Walker. Today is opening day of the Promo Bowl, featuring two matches in the Promo Dome, possibly one, one may have been delayed, uh, but we do also have the Promo Championship match, the rematch between the current champion, the Demon S., and the former champion, Travis the Walker Anderson. Hell yeah. Now, granted, you know, Nicola and I both was stupid when we recorded our promos. She was in a bad neighborhood. London, uh, yeah. <laughs> it what? London, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> Apparently, like, the spot that she decided to record at is known for, like, stabbings or something. Oh, shit. Oh, well, shit. <laughs> you missed the whole and, thing. And then, like, uh, my my part, like, where I was trying to record, like, we ended up being surrounded by coyotes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I've had I that around say the my one, The one time you don't have, like, deer and rabbits and yeah. squirrels around. Yeah, coyotes. <laughs> Yeah, and I could have easily gotten arrested because, you know, I was creeping around the woods behind the prison wearing a zombie mask. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the links we go for the promo champion. I was about to say, because <laughs> right? I was about to say, because Nikola almost got arrested. You're around coyotes. What the hell's wrong with you two? The things we do for promos. Things yeah. we do for promos. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, yeah, look at, well, I wouldn't call it a promo, I was going to say, but the whole, like, you know, getting thrown in the swamp thing. Yes. <laughs> well, hey, I was, uh, it wasn't a swamp, but it was a pond that I was beside. Is there a gator? Uh, gators? Uh, we'll see some no, gators. That's at, that's at Mike's house. That's true. <laughs> hey, what I want is donuts, man. I mean, you were the one going over to Edge's spot where he goes for donuts, man. You want to eat my donut? What the hell's wrong with you? Uh, dude, I was so pissed. I uh, Monday, my sister took me up to Asheville, and uh, uh, we went to go to the donut shop that Edge always goes to, and the damn place was closed. Mike, you gotta bring that up again. What? He's still reeling that he's never got to meet Edge. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got close this week. I got I'm really close. close. <laughs> No, I we I uh, we were driving through and even went by his house. He was like right there. It's just you know, I he didn't right want to like. Well, I mean, I, I didn't want to be like the dumbass that actually like intruded on Sonya Deville. <laughs> oh, know? like hey, uh, like, this is his porch. I just drive by. <laughs> That's it. I ain't trying to like fucking go knock on his door or nothing. <laughs> You could be like that girl that was on MTV Fanatic who worked at where Eminem used to work in his town. Oh my god, Eminem used to wear this apron! You could just be like, there's the edge of his house right over here. This is where he walks on these stairs. <laughs> that step well, foot on these stairs. I, I'm, I'm going again today, so wish me luck. <laughs> uh, wish you luck. Alright, good luck. On this day. I see clearly... <laughs> Um, we were going to have another promo uh, about, well, an exhibition today uh, with Travis and Alexander Rowan. However, Alexander found out that the Demoness had a little assistance from the two head judges, Robert Davis and Mike Larkin. So he decided to postpone the exhibition and give a little hand to Travis instead. So you'll see that a little bit later on. Which, of course, also means Mike and Robert will not be be making the decision on the promo championship match in the interest of fairness the the rest of the promo order will make the decision on who is the promo champion after today's bout um but before we get into the promos uh, the promo championship and before we get into this week's wrestling let's give you the first opening match of the promo bowl it is time to enter the promo dome This 
is your opening match of the tournament. It features former Knowledge and Predictions champion El Jefe, Moses Marquez, who also became this year's King of the Mic just a couple of weeks ago. He has challenged for the promo championship three times, but never quite managed to claim the gold. But he does have a promo competition record of seven wins and six losses. His opponent, Daniel Crimmins, has rather a less glowing record, but has certainly gone through a rebirth since his return to promo competition after spending the first half of the year as a head judge for the promo league and king of the mic, as well as the championship matches. But neither have faced each other before, so let's see what gimmick we get from Moses, or if Daniel's darker persona is enough. Professor dude, whatever the fuck he's calling himself now, Moses Marquette, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Moses Marquez, Marquette, Marquez, makes no fucking difference, you see, Moses, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet, I watched you redeem yourself over last year's King of Mike tournament and I saw you get from the very beginning all the way to the finals and you won the thing you won it I couldn't have been happier and I thought I thought that maybe just maybe you would be the one to beat the demon us. You would be the one to take the title. But what happened? Moses, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. You lost. You disappointed everybody and you lost. But hey, you should be used to that at this point. So I'm going to explain to you what happened. What happened? You use the same monotone voice. Where was that heat that you had when you went up against Teddy P? Where was that? It wasn't there. And that's why you fucking lost. That's why you couldn't get the goddamn job done. And whose fault is that? Is that my job? Is, is that my fault? No, that's not my fault. Is that Michael Larkin's fault? That person whined and complained like a little fucking bitch multiple times about how he should have won. He should have won. Save it. Grow up. Your failures are your responsibility. Nobody else's. Not mine. Not Michael Larkin's. Not Dassey Lee's. Yours. It's your fault that you dropped the fucking ball when you had it won. See, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna let you in my mind. What I looked for in that promo, I looked for passion. I looked for energy. You got the creativity down, but you didn't have the passion. You didn't have the passion that you have with Teddy P. Why? Why didn't you have it? Now see, I know my shortcomings. I know my win-loss record, but you know what? Fuck it. I don't care. I don't care how many I've won, how many I've lost. It's all been about having fun. You see, in the old days of these promos, it used to be about respect. It used to be about 
honor and having a good promo. You focus so much on the creativity, the gimmicks, all this, all that. You lost sight of the goal, of the prize. You could have wiped the floor with the demoness, but you didn't. And sure, in this promo, I could have gone and used a gimmick. I could have gone dark side. I could have done Mr. Happy Go Lucky, all that bullshit. Fuck it. There's too many goddamn gimmicks in these things anymore. What happened to people that just went on, said their piece, said what they were going to do, and did it? I don't need a fucking mask like that monotoned turd, Travis the Walker Anderson. I don't need to be all happy, happy, joy, joy, ranting about... I'm not going to let somebody take the food off my plate. Fuck that. Second time. Almost. Ooh, so close. But you didn't. And I have never been more disappointed in the competitor that you are. We've talked many a time about mistakes that have been made. Not just in yours, but in these competitions in the past. About certain people. I think you know who I'm talking about. Instead of taking that L, moving forward, thinking what you did wrong, and getting back in the game, you whined and complained like a little fucking coward, like a little bitch. You became the very thing that you said you wouldn't be. You became the crooked douchebag. You became the... Not supposed to say his name. You became that guy. People like those guys. There's a reason they ain't doing this anymore. What needs to happen with you? You need to be erased. You call yourself King Mo, but what the hell are you the king of? You sit on a throne of nothing but complete and utter failure. You are King Mo the Unworthy. And I don't care whether I win or lose. I am on a mission here to expose every fucking person in this stupid competition. And it starts with you. We were supposed to do this dance long ago, but the time has come. And I know what you're going to say, but it's not going to stop me. DC, the man they call DC, only to be really known as Daniel Crimmins. Right about now, DC, I bet you're sitting at home just pondering, what in the hell did I do to pull this fucking card? Not only did you have to, one, go right back into promo competition because that's what you wanted, but then they gave you the biggest dog there is that doesn't have gold around their waist, that is. But that's all in time. But you had to face me in your comeback. Now, granted, uh, this ain't no expedition, okay? This isn't going to be one of those things where you show up, you say your part, and everybody goes home happy, we hang out, we have a beer afterwards. Sorry, bro, you are officially in the lion's den. And I'm angry. I'm pissed off. And as one other guy in this competition likes to say, I'm hungry. So, DC, 
I give you familiar sight because you're used to seeing me in my car. Just like the familiar sight that you're going to be used to, which is you losing. You've won one promo competition in the entire promo career that you've had. You beat Moni Lin. You beat Moni Lin. And that's a win. I don't care what anybody says. That's a W. But, and I do mean but, let's stop and ponder for a second. You have one, let's call it, you have one key victory. One key victory. If this was sports and say this was the NCAA tournament for basketball, the, you know what I mean, the, the, the Final Four tournament, whatever you want to call it, March Madness, your key victories, you got one being Moni Lin. I got a lot more than one, baby. I am the guy that's Sandy Mir packing, and we only hear him now in the comment section. And it's f- very rare at that. He's that out of the loop that he isn't even willing enough to come in and comment as often as he should. So not only have I beaten Amir, I beat Teddy P. I beat the so-called wrestler that's no longer in this order. I beat that guy that nobody likes to say his name, but I beat that ass. The child, the boyhood dream came true on that one. But the fact of the matter is, bro, is you're like, how can I put this? You're like San Jose State. You got lucky to get in the tournament, baby, and you're going against Duke. You got no shot. You're the 16th seed against one seed. And like I tell everybody, and I'm going to tell you, thanks for coming out. But at the end of the day, the result will stay the same. Let's add another number to that loss column because DC came and went. He ain't laying on that shield, though, because that fight wasn't big enough for that shield. So, DC, let me leave you with this. If you really, really want to be in this game, Look who runs it. Learn from me. And no, that doesn't mean putting a stupid towel on your head. Attempting to be the crippler. Whistling like it's the walking fucking dead. Because it's not. This is pro-mo order. It's real deal McSteel. So as I walk past you onto whoever the fuck is my next opponent, you have been warned. I'm out for blood I will stop for no man or woman. And I will win this entire thing as easily as I won King of the Mic. And I will go on just continuously adding accolades to my name. Because 2020 may be the year we all hate. That's just because it's the year of El Jefe. This is the pretty badass Kelly Klein telling you to turn it to 11 and take it to the max. Hey, this is Tommy Dreamer, and you're listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast, giving you all your wrestling information to the extreme. So that is your first match of the first ever promo bowl. The results will be on Monday. We may have to delay the second match, which is Teddy P uh, versus Chris Maldonado. Uh, Teddy P had a little bit of bad news this week, so we're giving him a little bit more time to get the promo in, so hopefully we'll get it by next week. If not, then we'll have to have three matches next week. But either way, you're going to get one result on Monday, plus a promo championship a little bit later on. So They don't they don't need to wait till Monday. The result is I won, don't trip, <laughs> tater chip, on to the next. All right. Um, obviously, we're going to be predicting all out a little bit later on, so this first half is going to be a little bit different, really. We're going to have... Uh, the promo bouts, and then we're going to be talking WWE Impact and NXT kind of all in one block before we get to All Out. So, let's get this out the way first. <clears throat> Am I mad that Roman Reigns won the Universal Championship after the five months just like that? Nah, not really. Am I mad that The Fiend had a seven-day title reign? Not really. Am I mad that it was predictable... A little bit, but let's face it, The Fiend doesn't need a title anyway. What I am mad about is the brain-dead logic of WWE to introduce this group of hooligans 
that not only missed SummerSlam, the second biggest pay-per-view of the year, but also missed a pay-per-view called Payback, and their name is Retribution. Basically, they, they don't work Sundays. And even, no, they're like even more they're ridiculous now is they're supposed to be exclusive to Raw. How the hell does a gang of hoodlums be exclusive to any brand? Makes no sense. I'm, That's why. Can, can, can I go back for a second? Yeah. Is it bad that I didn't even know that the Fiend got the title back for, <laughs> for seven days? <laughs> <laughs> I let it, You said that. I was like, what the hell? The hell was that? Was that? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, he, well, I'll be honest. The SummerSlam match that he had with Braun was not my mm. favorite bout in the world. It was meh. And then he freaking gets attacked by Roman, and then they do the match, and then freaking the, the ring breaks, and then, hey, there goes Charles Robinson taking a flippity flop. And then, you know, <laughs> Little Leech. Little Leech. He, he did exactly then, you know, what his video game counterpart does when it glitches. Yes. That is true. Uh, <laughs> then Rope comes out, Spear, low blow, Spear, one, two, three. If I can be honest, The Fiend and Braun have got very little chemistry. Yeah, that's the thing. You would think because of them being in the Wyatt family and the whole nine, but no, yeah, they're bouts of <laughs> shit the bed, man. Drizzling shits. Yeah. Now, can I'm going to say this, and I'm sure people don't want to think it like this, but do you think that this is their way of saying, because we don't have Brock, this is Brock now? Because that was everything he did was Brock. You Maybe. go in, yeah. you kick the dude in the nuts, you hit your move, you leave. And by the way, yeah. I'm not a lawyer or nothing, but if like I have a contract and the whole thing is not signed and yet the event starts, I I can still sign it in the middle of it and get paid my entire fee. Like what the fuck? Yeah. Like I can show up at the end of the job, do nothing, and still get paid my whole fee. And, and since, yeah, in a context, since, smart marks certainly about since that. Since when do you ring the bell before everybody's gotten the ring? I don't know. That too? I <laughs> don't know. Like, literally, Braun got in the ring and that was it. They rang the bell. Mm-hmm. Making no sense well, around here. Too. Hey, because one of them's already in the ring, so hey, we just ring the bell. You know? Because it's a no hold bar triple you. threat match. Which, yes. by the way, isn't that <laughs> no DQ as it is? Yes. Uh, a double, it's, it's dumb. A, a wrestling double negative. Mm-hmm. And it did not make a positive. It's an oxymoron, is what it is. It's an oxymoron of a match, and it is a moron of a match. Um, but go, yeah, going back to retribution, how the hell can they be exclusive to any brand? I'm sorry, you can only break windows and set fire to stuff on Mondays. Again, it makes no sense because you have them terrorizing Raw and SmackDown. It's like, why would you have an exclusive to one brand if you're trying to figure out make them this most dominant force that you have right now and you just want them to be on Raw? Firstly, I think that's kind of devaluing. It kind of sucks, absolutely sucks for that whole thing that they're doing right now with the group. Yeah, they, I mean, up until now, they've also been more destructive on SmackDown. They couldn't really seem to be able mm-hmm. to pick the locks to Raw for the first few weeks. I mean, <laughs> hey... <laughs> I mean, what's next? You're going to terrify people at Raw Underground next? Oh. Oh, yeah, where the shooters are at? Where yeah. People, because like, that's legit. You're a totally different person come Raw Underground. Yep. Freaking <laughs> Riddick dumb. Moss. Freaking Riddick Moss and Titus O'Neil. You know, oh. first off, I can't do with the Titus big ass in there. And I was like, what in the hell? <laughs> Who, in, what, like, you, I was just baffled he was in there. And then Girl. I see Riddick Moss and... Uh, I don't even know. And then what happened to Dolph Ziggler? Wasn't last week he was out here shooting on Bobby Lashley? Yeah, and then, then he, he gets in the there. He gets, I, I've it's creamed I inside. I've literally sure. got five bullet points for Raw because as soon as the Iconics broke up, I lost interest. See, you know what? That fucking sucked. No, that really made me mad because then I saw the exclusive. They were both crying, and you could tell that was genuine. But also, oh, yeah. they had... But they also did the thing where ba- Peyton Royce sacrificed Billy Kay to the lamps and bringing Raw. That Rob... was messed up. Yes. Oh, oh of course it was genuine because Billy Kay is going to get buried now. Yeah, and, they, and they're going to push Peyton Royce to the moon like Cameron Grimes. To the moon. To the moon. <laughs> to the moon, baby. But the whole match made no sense. There's no reason to break either one of them up because the women's tag team division sucks and they need them. They're like the only two real tag teams they've got, apart from Sasha and Bailey, who are about to break up anyway. 
And personally, Shayna and Nia Jax makes me laugh because oh. I absolutely hate Nia Jax, and she goes, and she sucks, and that made me laugh because she does, and she spoke the truth on that. But it's for the funny because God, it's man, true. It's funny because yes. it's true. It's funny because he's fat. <laughs> no, anyway, it's <laughs> when you have Shayna Baszler, you know, is the athlete that she is, trained by the likes of Billy Robinson, the straight up shooter, and then you got Nia Jax, bada bing, bada boom. I'm gonna crush your nose and everything on your body. It's just like, ugh. she was and so now, excited here, to have a belt in her hands. Oh, oh yeah, my she god, is. that's the thing. Now Shayna's gonna do all the work, and Nia's just gonna gloat. Sounds like the perfect tag team. <laughs> exactly. I, I saw somebody point out that it's also a good dynamic that you've got Nia, who is, let's face it, dangerous in the ring, hurts people, uh, teaming with Shayna, who could potentially purposefully hurt somebody. I mean, after that submission, Dazzy Dane. That was a beautiful. Oh, you got to love it. Absolutely beautiful. And in fact, that was a whole highlight of payback for me because the whole pay-per-view sucked. Hated it with a pitch. It was... I fell asleep. It wasn't even B-level, it was C-level. Like, it literally every match apart from the main event could have easily been on Raw or SmackDown, and then the main event sucked anyway. It just had mm -hmm. more hype behind it. By the way, just for the record, since Moses Marquez said it beautifully, talk about falling asleep, I forgot which match it was, but I was so bored with the damn pay-per-view. I'm not going to lie, I fell asleep too because the next thing I remember, my dad's yelling at me going, Hey, did you see the finish? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, oh, they, they won. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're not the only one who fell asleep there, Mr. Marquez. He just goes, hey, did you see the finish? <laughs> no. At least, I was going to say, I was like, well, my wife woke me up abruptly, but not that bad. Was it Matt Riddle and King Corbin? Oh my god. No, she No, I woke up like right after that and I was like, Hey, did did the riddle match happen? She's like, the bro dude? I'm like, Yeah, she's like I, She's like, I don't know if that was a match, but I was like, what? Hey, I don't even want to watch it again. And then I would go to rewatch it and I fell asleep again. Hey, that happened to me Friday, because I'll be honest with you, the one match I fell asleep through on SmackDown was Matt Riddle and Jack Cable. <laughs> Oh, my God. I do not care about Riddle and Corbin. I don't. I love Matt Riddle. But, yeah, that match was just bleh. And it's also because maybe it's Corbin. You know what I'm saying? Because the King Corbin. You know what I'm saying? It's Corbin. It's Corbin. First off, and let, let's not downplay the fact that if, if they were, hell, and even in Evolve, Chad Gable versus Matt Riddle would be like. Oh, would be a fantastic. Yeah. But on fucking SmackDown, it's. Man. Short and mm -hmm. just bleh. Well, on a positive, <sighs> Keith Lee beat Randy Orton clean in six minutes. The way it should have been, man. That's how you do it. You got, like, all the three moves in the pay-per-view? <laughs> yes. Something like that? Yes. And I'm like, um... What, uh... I still can't stand his music. Uh, I don't know why he has to have a shirt on while my man fucking Otis has a tankini. And <laughs> at least they got rid of the skirt. That's, that's Yeah, thank God. <laughs> What the fuck were they That's thinking? Um, they He's a big fat guy. <laughs> so is Otis. <laughs> so Keith Lee confronts Randy the next night on Raw and then randomly gets jumped by Dolph Ziggler. Because they're in the match to determine who's in the triple threat, Dazzy Dangerously. Because Dolph Ziggler earned it by getting his ass beat on, by on Raw on the ground. On like every week, every <laughs> week getting his ass beat. Hey, who do we got to put in there? Dolph. He fought Drew and got, got his ass whipped. Dolph, come over here and make Keith Lee look good. Uh, well, the triple threat match was pointless anyway because Randy won, so he gets another match. Uh, First of all... After squashing gets... Kevin Owens, thanks to an attack from Alexander... Uh, oh. Alexander? Alistair Black. Alexander, <laughs> Alexander Black. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm looking forward to the match, but my God, man, just a freaking black mask. Good Lord. Took out that boy KO. Sold it like a charm too. He's all he, he still got up wobbling and just, it was oh it was awesome. Mm. Mm. We can still go. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's pretty much where my notes end with the Riot Squad beating the Iconics, and then I just skipped the entire third hour. 
Well, I mean, when you had friggin' Apollo Crews and Shelton Benjamin in there, and it just turned into them getting beat up by the Hurt Business again, and it's Which, just like. By the way, I wanted to see that shoot. You know, Shelton Benjamin, fucking, you know, it yeah, was the, uh, the the world's greatest tag team. You know, he's a shoot wrestler, just like uh, what's the other dude? I keep Charlie Haas. Name. Charlie Haas. I wanted to say Charlie Haas, but I was like, no, that's probably wrong. Oh, poor okay. Charlie Haas. Nobody remembers him. Here's the thing. Okay, since you want to bring that up, you son of a bitch, I'm going to mention it. It was Miss Jackie's right husband. Hold on. When he came back in 2006 <laughs> to face Shelton Benjamin on Raw, and the coach, he's running down to the ring, and the coach goes, oh, his opponent is Ch- Ch- Charlie Haas. And then nothing. Nobody cared that Charlie Haas was coming down to the ring. Nobody cared about Charlie Haas. And it sucks because he's a very good wrestler. It, it, no, I agree. I, I remember him more from uh, their run in uh, ROH. The ROH run was very, very good. Oh, when they were going against the All Night Express and Kenny King and Rhett Titus? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it yeah. never made sense why he never got reactions because he was a great wrestler. Oh, yeah. Well, the last storyline he really did before he was, you know, really gone was the one where him and Jackie Gate and Don Marie were having that thing, and apparently he had a thang with Don Marie. Who didn't? Have a thang. A thang. Who didn't? That is Even. True. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even Tori did. I'm uh, just going to say. <laughs> all right. I'm not going to lie. That was, that, that was a, as a youngin, as a young 10-year-old. Oh, love that story. Armageddon, man. You know, friggin' Al Wilson, God rest his soul. So there's some some things about that, man. That hotel room. Oh, hey, looking good. Kids today will never understand Armageddon 2003. Or was it 2002? 2002. 2002. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bow, chicka, wow, wow. That was like the highlight of the pay-per-view. It was. That it was. And suddenly kids go to Google. Right. <laughs> I mean, th- then you had, well, the match that followed it sucked. That stepdaughter versus stepmother match, because this was right after mm. the funeral and the whole thing where the god goddamn casket collapses. And dad, I'm so sorry. And then she just smacks her with the vase at the funeral. Oh, taking it back. Taking it back. Some of the cringy stuff back then. Hey. That it was. Um, and the girls... All commercials, yep. All right, I'm done. Guys, <laughs> So this past week <laughs> and next week and possibly in the foreseeable future if things change, uh, we had a Tuesday Night War as NXT presents Super Tuesday while Impact had its usual Tuesday slot. Um, let's get Impact first so Travis can wake up a little bit. Well, everybody... <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody's not going to be pissed like they were in 2014 when Eric Young won the, the Impact World Heavyweight Championship. Man, copying Daniel Bryan back in 2014. You know what? Yeah, this not so much a copy. Yeah, I, I, I saw that result before I saw the show, unfortunately. But, I mean, it, I wasn't disappointed. I saw you going after that guy that was laughing at that post Andre made. Well, I didn't really go after him. I just didn't really understand why well, he was you laughing at. <laughs> yeah, you know what? What did I miss? The who? Why was somebody laughing at Andre? So uh, Andre yeah, posts um, that Eric Young's a new Impact World Champion, and there's just like one laughing reaction from Sergio or something, and everybody's like, oh. "What's funny?" Because Eric Young won the title, <laughs> that's why it's funny. Eric Young. Eric Young is Eric... a fucking veteran workhorse. Oh, he's awesome. Like I said, I loved the fact that he won in 2014, but it was right after the Daniel Bryan thing, so that's yeah, why I got the attention. That, that whole thing was just so obviously stupid. And Dixie Carter's talking about the beard, and I'm like, okay, you're, you're doing the exact same thing as Daniel Bryan. But this time it's different because we got the world-class maniac. We got Eric Young coming back, being this absolute nutty heel that, that he was the last time he was there. And it's great. Like oh, yeah. He's doing awesome. He's I can't I'll look forward to his run. Man. Impact are doing what they should have always done, really, and just not try to be anybody else. Well, yeah, and then you have people Back. like EC3 and Deanna Perrazzo in there, and Deanna Perrazzo's booked better than she was on NXT, and EC3's oh, here queen. just three days. Oh. Um, but we kicked off with Sammy Callahan defeating Rob Van Dam. Thank God. Despite some more twerking oh from Katie Forbes. No. Okay. <laughs> Can I just say that I just saw highlights of this match and about, and I don't know why I know this math that well, at least it was like probably like six minute clip. A, a good solid minute, it was just twerking. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, 
like I'm all about it, you know. Hey, cool, I'm, I'm down. You know what I mean? But then there gets to the point where it's like, can you just not right now? <laughs> yep. Yep. And like I want to say it nicely, but then it's like I'm watching there, this and I'm like, okay, no this way. is the shit that's embarrassing to watch in front of people. There is only one person, okay. I think, on this planet Kier that Hogan. can actually say, hey, to tell her to stop twerking nicely. And yes. that is going to be Michael Lark. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, so, Mike, next time you can speak you to her. For us next time you <laughs> talk can to you do that? <laughs> next time I speak to Katie Forbes on the LMC podcast, yes, I'll make sure. To tell her, hey, Katie, can, can you stop twerking? It's a little too much for Moses Marquez's eyes. Because the nameplate <laughs> came up that said Rob Van Dam, but all you could see was Katie Forbes' ass cheeks. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying I wasn't about it. I'm just saying, I'm like, we're seeing some action over here, and it's like in the same frame, she's just like, I'm like, okay, that's fantastic. Can you let the offense happen? You know, right, And on. then, you know, celebrate afterward. And I've said this, and I mean, we got booty shaking, earthquaking over there, panties dropping, ain't no stopping kind of deal there. It's one of those things where you look at Katie Forbes, and like I've said, I've seen her wrestle in WOW Women of Wrestling with the fur coat, and she has the male rats, and she can wrestle. There's no denying it, because she does have a nice build about like her. In the coat? She works very like hard. Competing in the coat? Surely, surely no, she wore spoiling. The fur in the coat? No. In, not in the coat. She in wore the, the fur coat to the ring. <laughs> fur coat? <laughs> Yes, but no. It's, well, that brings me comes, to the old catchphrase, fur coat, no knickers. Yes. Right. So, but that's the thing, man, too. That I love Katie Forbes as a talent, but the twerking is a little too much. And, it, you know, I it's mean, the whole thing. She, she did put that ass to a different kind of use after the match when she, they were, like, ramming chairs into Sammy in his face. Hey, man. Hold on a second, man. That brings me to the old saying, more cushion for the pushing, <laughs> Mr. Jesse Dangerously. There weren't no cushion on that one. Oh my goodness! <laughs> ass right to the face. I never seen an ass like that, Eminem style. My goodness. Yeah, she, she. Moses Marquez, you want to talk about that ass? I did like that last spot though. Yeah, when she slammed her ass into the chair to hit the dude, I was like, "See, that's fine. Like, I'm down for that." <laughs> you know what I mean? But like Most... I said, like, come out, do some shaking. He gets some offense in, do some shaking. He hits the frog splash, clean hit, do some shaking. Oh, I was like, like, Jesus Christ. Moses Marquez wanted to see that tattoo on her derriere of the lips on her on her on her butt cheek. Oh, trust me, I saw I saw it playing. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey, her and Rebel used to twerk together when they were a tag team. Oh, do you, you know, do you know she I'm can make it open that. and close? <laughs> yeah, I'll catch you now. That's <laughs> something I might be interested in. Oh my goodness! Um, Still the best part of LFC. I'm mean, just going to say this because it was funny and it did happen. Still the best part of LFC. Face the Sheila Crass Cardinal, LFC 27, sexy or nerdy Inkton Kirby. Celebrate like she won the title. AJ Kirsch looks at it right there. No, no, you didn't win the title. It's still one of the best parts of LFC 27. Check it out on the website. But yeah, it's one of those moments. Oh, I digress. Go ahead, guys. I digress. Uh, I'm going to save Russell House because it kind of tied into a later segment. Um, so Reno Scum great. versus Rhino. Obviously, we were trying to get Heath Slater employed with the hashtag Heath for Impact, which is a little bit of a tongue twister. Um, and we don't really see Heath until the end of the match when a cameraman suddenly invades the ring. Oh, lo and behold, so it's Heath Slater. WWE thing. Yeah, and then he gets chased off by Scott Moore. <laughs> He's like, oh shit! There's the now, if you notice also, the move that he does, which he's used for years, used to be called the sweetness. Now it's called the wake-up call. Can can Demore not just give him a contract? Do they have a limit on how many right? people he can employ or something? No, who knows. But no, you I just, like can you get out of here, you hooligan? Yeah. <laughs> it's great that you want to you be a hooligan, you go to Monday Night Raw. There you go. Don't forget your hoodie. Well, it's great that they're putting him and Rhino back together, which is cool, because I did enjoy them when they were the tag champs. Yeah, I mean, obviously. We, we all know he's actually working for Impact, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing that bothers me about it is, like, it's the same damn gimmick he's already done. He did that free agent gimmick in WWE. And yeah. I, like, I just don't see Well, that's where the whole I Got Kids I thing came from. Exactly. Yep. You're pretty much going off of something that he did four years ago. You guys are right. Yeah. Where he said he had, like, seven kids and they all lived in a double wide. Mm -hmm. And Rhino's in the corner making cheesy crackers. 
<laughs> hey, man, those are delicious. I already eat those cheesy crackers. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Offering Renee Young them cheesy crackers? Hell to the air. Uh, Renee Young shit all over that company. Oh. Uh, <laughs> poor Renee. I don't know. Any, she also any, got any super kicked by Mox. Yeah. Oh, yeah, when she was doing the thing with the hockey stick? Yeah. I love that. <laughs> And wham, and I'm just like, you're a fucker, dude. And he's like, <laughs> steals the toilet paper and runs off. Um, so EC3 obviously stole the quote-unquote TNA World Championship last week. Uh, and this week he invites Moose to come and find him, or he's going to send the belt back in little tiny itty-bitty pieces. To, ch- to oh, channel Pat McAfee there. I was gonna. I, I was gonna more talk about like how Brody Lee yeah. just dumped the fucking broken belt on him. Bam! There you go. There's your broken pieces. Maybe they can get the same guy to break it up. Because hey. they were clean pieces. Uh, but I, I, I digress. Hey, no sharp edges. Uh, Moose asks some random dude where EC3 is. The dude is is openly wearing an EC3 T-shirt, <laughs> and then takes off his jacket to reveal he's he is actually wearing an EC3 T-shirt, even though we could see it before. Oh, well, Moose also wants him to call the cops because there's a hostage situation. <laughs> Just find some random yeah, geek with that I guy's mean, shirt and yeah. ask him where he's at. He'll know. Call the police. Call the police because there's stolen contraband. <laughs> to be honest, I did have the same kind of feeling that Easy Freeze doing this promo like a, a hostage situation. <laughs> I love it, though. <laughs> Uh, in tag team action, well, before we got to the tag match, there was a weird bit backstage where um, <clears throat> the Good Brothers were basically doing a story time. T- Tales talking from the shop, road, talking shop, sh- talking shop and mania they were. Um, but the Rascals were a little bit preoccupied because they had a tag team match with Austin and Fulton. Now, for this match, the referee didn't give two shits about tags. It was basically nope. a tornado tag. Well, you know, okay, so do any refs care about tags anymore these days? They do in FTR matches because they don't have a choice. FTR enforce the rules. <laughs> this is all. This had retro written all over it. Just like they don't give a shit about tags. Just get in it. It's like Ring of Honor style tag matches. What tag? What? What's a tag? It's just my turn. <laughs> uh, and you know they even won the match with some double team offense uh, before being confronted by the Motor City Machine Guns who invite them to have a tag team title rematch next week Fulton was like a damn monster I have not seen Fulton like that and he looked like a friggin monster you know this dude when he was in NXT before Sanity, he was teaming with Angelo Dawkins, and they were an okay tag team. But once they put him in Sanity, what the original in the world, what? That's a oddball tag team if I've ever heard one. <laughs> so what? The, the original. <laughs> Hold on, man, bro. In the in, in early days of NXT, he was Sawyer Fulton teaming with Angelo Dawkins. Yeah, I vaguely yeah, remember. Him. Well, I remember. I remember this the names is... being together. I don't remember them being together. Yeah, and they also had when before the revival, it was Scott Dawson and Garrett Dillon, who was Jody Christopherson. Yeah, I don't remember him. Okay, anyway, is, is he like the Charlie Haas like of the team? Now? Well, yeah, he's the there one that was originally in Sanity before Killian Dane replaced him in Sanity, and they kicked him out. Replaced him and then very he quickly. Got fucked. Yes, that he did. Oh, a, I remember when Dane got hired because all of a sudden. There was like a thing on WCPW. He's standing there in an NXT t-shirt. Big demo. Just like, oh yeah, look, check him out. He just got <clears> signed. And I'm like, no, he didn't. You shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then, bam, there he goes. There he is. Mm. All right, well, now we can talk Russell House because it all kind of ties together. Um, so we open up with everybody trying to get Johnny Swinger out of the dressing room because, unfortunately, he's been dressed by Crazy Steve. Oh. Hold on. The best. <laughs> he, he mentioned Baba Son, and I'm like, giant Baba reference. Good <laughs> lord. Okay. Uh, he's basically dressed exactly like Crazy Steve. I was expecting, like, a f- old school clown, you know, with a colorful wig and everything, but 
I digress. Nah. Uh, Dreamer appoints Dreamer. Bravo oh, the referee. Hold on. hold on. Wait, you forgot something about the. Uh, <laughs> you forgot something about Johnny Swinger. What? Okay, what did he say? He goes. Matt Board would be so mad at me right now. Oh. Matt Board was the original yes. Doink the Clown. <laughs> that was great. That one went over my head. I died. It was hilarious. I mean, the man was on the first WrestleMania as his real name, Matt Board. But then he becomes Doink the Clown, the OG Doink the Clown, God rest his soul. And they actually brought it up. And I died because he was also Big Josh in WCW. So, I mean, my God, the continuity of Matt Board. He's got the face paint on looking like a clown. Doink the Clown. I loved it. It's the little things. It's the nuances. So, I'm yeah, shut swing, up. Swinger's got some, got some knowledge. Let's be honest. He does. Um, so Bravo's appointed the referee for Rosemary and Tyre, which we, sh- we should have known anyway. Um, mm-hmm. To the stunt, well, before we get to the match, uh, the Dinas are fighting Triple XL all over the house because they took her beer. They took her beer. Um, oh. <laughs> he fucking, like, suplexes him. Dude, this is a couch. And then they keep fighting. Yeah. Friggin' died at the whole thing. It was great. Oh my dude, why did I watch this more often? This was. Why don't you just take the stairs? Oh oh, yeah, take the stairs. And And like standing there, he's like, "Oh, he's still there. He's just waiting." Between the camera cuts, he's got one continuous scream. (laughs) Yes. Um, There was also a ping for the elevator winding up. The whole thing was awesome. Half the match was also taken up by a ping pong game. What is this for? A very serious ping pong gang, mind you. Well, I, do you know what? honestly, I think it was just them ribbing on the whole Street Profits Viking Raiders shit. Ah, maybe. <laughs> All maybe. I know is is the intensity and in, and in, uh, like Tommy Dreamer's eyes was it was incredible. Yeah, I I cared more about the ping pong match than I did about Crazy Golf. There you go. Mm-hmm. All day um, long. But unfortunately, Susie wasn't happy that they broke the truce and leaves the room oh. with her hand covered in blood. Oh, yes. And Dreamer dream just like, declares the her the happened? winner. <laughs> what happened in there? Okay, I guess you win. I was like, then, wait a minute, what in the fuck just happened? The continuity was great because when we got to Taya versus Rosemary, the Dinas and Triple XL are all bandaged <laughs> up around the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I thought they were dead. They're all like, everybody has a sling on. One of the dudes has his eyes taped like he fucking hung out with uh, Seth Rollins or something. I'm pretty sure AC's missing some fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, but everybody's in stunned silence as Taya gets to win. But wait, there's more. Yep. Uh, Bravo finally bites the apple. I'm, I No shame in saying my jaw actually dropped when he pulled out the ring. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, uh, I, I saw none of that coming. <laughs> Bravo proposes to Rosemary with Tyre's blessing, uh, which means no more Wrestle House, unfortunately. But it did end. Yeah, yeah, it did yeah. end with a revelation. Crazy Steve <laughs> finally admits to the camera that he's the one that took the beers because he couldn't read the labels. <laughs> it was me, Dieter. It was me it all was along. Me all along. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pretty good, love it. You forgot the line. She goes, you know I'm a demon, right? Yeah. yeah that's what I love about you. <laughs> I wonder if Nicola said that when she was proposed to. Oh. I'll message you later. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so they teleport out and teleport into the impact zone during Deanna's black tie affair, which has already been interrupted by Jordan Grace and the return in to Neil Dashwood. Mm-hmm. Her promo yeah, sucked. I, I, well, what do you expect? <laughs> I expect her to learn how to fucking talk after being gone for like a goddamn year. Yeah, well, promos were was... never a strong suit. Nah, for me, I looked this at was it like bad. I looked at it like this, like because these two have had their done their thing in Women of Honor for Ring of Honor, so there's the Ring of Honor tie-in and continuity there, which I think is kind of cool. So, but on the other hand, I, we also get Kylie Ray coming in there and putting a whooping on that girl, Deanna Perazzo, and I want to see Kylie Ray go for the title. No. What do you mean no? Travis doesn't no. like Kylie Ray. Why? Because oh, she oh, retired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she's eh. a bitch. 
No, no, no. All right, borderline. No, borderline. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I just I... dollar store Bailey. That's I'm sorry. I, I love her. I'm too sweet to accidentally throw you out of the ring gimmick. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> She's like, oh my god! I can't believe I actually did that. I just think it's funny. Well, here's what's funny about it. She's Smiley Kylie Ray, and her theme song is so happy and perky, and the words are ruthless. Whoa! <laughs> That's why I laugh at it because she's perky, <laughs> but her theme song is ruthless. Whoa! And I'm like, all right. And I, and for all of the above, there is why I cannot take her seriously. Oh, but she, girl can work. Girl can work. Yeah. I like that. And any time I see Jordan Grace, I'm a happy man. That too. The whole lot of, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. whole lot of, Don Dada. Now I'm going to ask you, man, because a certain someone who was the kingpin is would drink, you know, Nia Jax's bathwater. Are you in that same category when it comes to Jordan Grace, Mr. Moses? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a straw, I'll hang out in there. Who's she? She's with somebody again. I'm trying oh, to figure out. Oh, Jonathan who's Gresham. They just bought. That's him. right. Which is fine with me. I'm down. You know what I mean? He's a grappler. I'm a grappler. We'd hang out together. It's all good in the hood. And he's British. Hey, well then, hey, I'm down. You know what I mean? I like the Brits. Hey, is he really? Hey, Moses, yeah. just just remember, it's not gay if it's in a three way. Hey, all right. What? I like the style. <laughs> Wait a minute. He wasn't the dude that moose. Told to phone the police, was he? No. Oh, it kind of looks like him. It does look like him, but I'll take a look. Yeah, Jonathan Gresham, I believe I thought was British, or he wrestled no, he's a lot American. in England. No. Oh, he's, he's American. From Atlanta. Okay, I'm thinking. I was, about... say, I was like, I know he wrestled a lot. Oh, British he was trained in, by in Curtis UK. fucking Hughes. Mr. Fucking That's Hughes. That's awesome. And then he, Mr. I know he had a long thing going with uh, with Zack Saber, like. Every fucking promotion. That's where I got it from. Yes. These yeah, guys yeah. would have like a, a a serious grapple match, and it was awesome every time. Yes, that's where I got the UK thing from. My fault. Zack Saber Jr. He did have a long feud with Zack Saber Jr. You're right. Hey, they're actually married. Yes, they are. Oh, are they? Yep, for two years now. Had a boy. Had <laughs> a boy. Well, you like to <laughs> celebrate later when I show up. Well, you also like the fact that they call her Thick Mama Pump. I do love that. I do like it. And then her cool little theme song with the sirens and everything. Yeah. Yep, I'm a sucker for the Steiners. Even though he's old as shit and he still came back, I don't give a shit. I was still a sucker for Scott Steiner. He was still kind of working. I don't know why the fuck he was working, but hey, all right. All right. Uh, well, obviously, we've already talked about the main event. EY is the new world champion. Uh, it, it, it took Eddie about five minutes to actually get some offense. Um, right? And in the end, EY hits him with a hockey mask and a power driver. Hockey mask. Well, here's what I like about that. Because if you remember when he was in Team Canada, what was the weapon of choice? The hockey stick by Mr. Coach Scott Demore. Of course, Mr. because Canada. Canadians? <laughs> What's that all about, eh? I hear Canada and I think Leonard Kenny. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, in keeping with his new gimmick, EY goes right after Eddie's knee after the match. Oh yeah, like a dick. Uh, and and Josh Matthews kind of undersells it. I mean, if it was Jim Ross, he'd be calling him a son of a bitch and everything. <laughs> oh, you oh, bastard! What'd you do that for? <laughs> um, oh, but that wasn't even the end because stuff. Moose did find EC 3s locker room and basically found a surveillance wall. Of him. Yes. You yeah, have been creepy. warned. Like, it always bugs me what, what that's actually called. Is it a crime wall? Or whatever. Anybody in law like enforcement, what's it actually ball. called? What's the official name for it? Anyway. I'm thinking the crime wall. That makes sense. Yeah, crime. But it wasn't a crime, though. This was literally surveillance. <laughs> it wasn't a crime. <laughs> it, wasn't <laughs> it wasn't a crime. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, that was Impact. Uh, so before we predict All Out, let's see what we have for the rematch for the promo championship. It is time for... Did I, I forget something? something? For th- no, I got something to play for that because since I'm in it. And you know what? I got one thing to say about that. If it's that damn song, it's going to get stuck in my head again. It's me, your boy. That's why I got to play for that, man. Okay. Hey there, demons. It's hey your boy. Hey there, demons. It's me. Your boy. 
That's what I got to say about that. That's what Bravo's going to say when he enters the bedroom. <laughs> hey, all right. <laughs> all right, it is time for the rematch between the Demon S and Travis Walker Anderson for the promo championship. Let's hit it. There's been a lot of questions going around wanting to know if I still have what it takes. They've been wondering, am I Travis Anderson? Or am I the Walker? These are all really questions but the thing is I'm one in the same it's funny how history tends to repeat itself it's funny because it's true last year I had a promo title shot against Michael Larkin. On the same day, I had another match with Andre Corbeil. That was fun, going up against the Canadian Destroyer. It was fun going up against this huge YouTube sensation type persona. This man that his debut intro he was calling out one of us from the Heart Dungeon. It was an honor to go up against him, but me talking about him, there's a reason. He made me distracted. I was distracted and I lost focus. I faded him off into the darkness. I lost focus on the promo championship. This time it's going to be a little bit different because I, even though I had another match, I had a match with Alexander. I had him right here. I had his throat in my hands. And then we locked eyes and we both realized it's better to work together than against each other something you you know a little bit about Nikolai see you went and recruited Robert Davis and Michael Larkin because this time you needed to go bigger you had to do something better you had to get more people involved to take me down because you and Demon R just don't have what it takes to do it a second time alone. Mikola, last time, last time you beat me, I tried to fight you with the light. If you can't tell this time. I am the darkness. I am what keeps you up late at night, scared in the shadows. Everyone thinks I'm just a shadow of my former self. What happened to that boat of this? What happened to the walker? The problem is I never left. Not once did I ever leave. I just backed down a little bit. I let you have your moment of glory in the light with my title belt. 
with my promo championship. I let everyone have a moment with the walker. They think, what happened to the walker? Or was it Brittany was just a little too savage? No. No, I let these newcomers come along and see what they got. I said that from the beginning. I just waited and waited until it was my time. And my time is now. You thought you were gonna be slick bringing in Mr. Robert Davis and Michael Larkin. Well, guess what? I'm not here alone. I have Alexander Rowan. I have him on my side. And he is gonna hack your promo and mess it all up since your little partners are no longer able to judge it only makes mine look better Nikola you have been an incredible champion I mean hell you did defeat me for it but the thing is I have my own records I like to uphold like defeating the undefeated. So, enjoy your time as champion while you still have it. Because it's my time. Individually, we run roughshod through this entire division. We've taken out everything from kings to queens to everything in between. And there was nothing you could do to stop us. Together, you can stop us. You see, we've entered a new phase. It's time to step out and step in. Welcome to the Devil's Playground. One, two, we're looking for a demon. We don't know where she is. We're looking for the demon. Where are the demons hiding? Is she? It is us, your friendly demoness. <laughs> ah, 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 no, 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 not so friendly. Hi, Travis. You have been a pain in my side for the past 142 days. I may be wrong on that one. We shall see. So we have brought you... <laughs> to the demon's playground where everything here is a toy for me to play with you see mortals the things I do to stay champ this promo is going to be a very bit different from the rest you see 
There is no demon R in this one. He decided to stay mortal for this and let the queen of the underworld speak. Travis, we have done this dance so many times now and you are so determined to get your title back. It's not your title. <laughs> the noise in this playground, my sweets, is delightful. <laughs> so the black hearts are all will be seen very soon. Travis, you have pestered and pestered about your title. Your title. It's not your title, mortal. It is ours and we have earned it. And we have destroyed you all one by one. And still, none of you seem to be able to be capable of defeating us. It really isn't that hard. But mortals are not as intelligent as us demons. I'm in danger, mortals, all the time. <laughs> and we also have a lot of different things going on in our mind. All I have to do right now, mortals, is summon one or two. And your end is near. Travis. It's come to the time where this will be the end of you. And the end of this constant rain that you keep on preaching about. You didn't kill us the first time, so what makes you think you can kill us this time? You can't, because no one can. But one thing's for sure, this time I will take everything you love and care away from you. I let you off easily last time, this time it won't be the same. See, when you come into this playground, you never leave it. You stay here forever. <laughs> there are many souls in this playground, all screaming. All rattling around. And it's quite ironic, really, because I killed Moses on that hill over there. <laughs> Because you two decided to be a team. Or, should I say, it didn't work because I slayed the king and now I'm going to slay the henchman. <laughs> we are still not afraid. There is not one mortal out there that terrifies us anymore. You could say, we are immortal. But you already knew that, didn't you? <laughs> so whatever you come at me with, I am ready and waiting. You can bring your sharp objects. You can bring your crosses. You can bring your holy water. You can bring the light. But we will never go into the light. Never. And no one will take our wings from us. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> that already happened, didn't it? When we were banished. <laughs> Ah, oh, mortals, Travis especially. This will be the last time me and you face off. And if that mean Alexander hacks into this promo or our promo, he better start running because he will have me running after him, biting at his heels. Or I could send Demon R after him because you know how much fun that would be. Time has come and your end is near, Travis. Your destiny has been written in our heads. It's the end for you. And the funny part is, I don't even have to try. Because why? Because I am the demoness, the champ, the queen of the darkness, the Gorgon. We are going to keep watching you, mortals. Because remember, we see all, we hear all. We are the darkness. This one is for you, Kingpin and Mere Blackbone. Embrace the madness. Embrace the darkness. Every body dies.
<laughs> they told you, mortals, but you didn't listen. United we stand, divided we fall. Embrace the darkness, embrace the madness. Every body dies. Blackheart's rule. Set me free. Hey everybody, it's the interview queen, Alicia Atute here, and you are currently listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast. It's time to take it to the Max. Hey, this is the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy. Welcome to the Madhouse. So come and join us on the Max Wrestling Facebook group on by Monday for the result. Um, the Demoness is now officially the longest reigning promo champion at 151 days. You go, girl. Uh, she defeated Amir's record of 144 during the week. Oh, yeah, whatever happened to that guy? Oh, yeah, I know what happened to that guy. I sent him. Well, he showed up in Mike's promo. That he did? Oh, what son of a bitch. And literally everybody was like, wait a minute, is that Amir? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or is it Teddy Long? <laughs> hey, man, I'll be honest with you. That's kind of a cool trend that we got going now because uh, since I've been for every, the cameos Mike, and everything. You should have got promo. Teddy Long because he could have just been like, I'm here to get motherfucking paid. Holla, holla, holla. <laughs> yes. Well, that's cool now that we got like doing everybody's doing cameos now since I kind of started it up, brother. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's doing cameos and promos. You know what I'm saying? It's like a good shout stuff. out in a music video. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> it's good stuff. Good stuff. It is. All right. It's time to go all out. There all are right. nine matches. Unfortunately, Britt Baker's on the damn pre show. Oh. And I don't know what the oh. hell a tooth and nail match is, but. Eh. Right? Wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tooth and nail match. I love that. I Surely love that so it's not going to be the loser loses a tough. Maybe. A She's a dentist, bro. She's a dentist, bro. So, for Brett to win, she has to take a tooth from Big Swole, or for Big Swole to win, she got to take a nail from Britt Baker. Is that is that we what we're saying? seen an eye oh, for oh, an eye. This is better than eye for an eye. It is. It's way better, <laughs> but still. Act like Imagine a little know. rubber ping pong tough coming out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, I'll kick it off. And uh, I really don't know. Uh, it's Britt Baker's first match, and I don't know how long. Oofa, since she got hurt in that tag match with Nyla Rose. Oh, jeez. Uh, her knee injury, I want to say, like, at least ten weeks. I'm yes. going to go Big Swole. I think just because she's been getting the absolute, you know, crap kicked out of her and the fact that you know, Britt Baker is the heel that she is with Rebel, Reva, whatever you want to call Her it. Her name is a Reva go Big... now, apparently. Okay. So, <laughs> when it comes to those two, I gotta go Big Swole as well, just because she can finally get the revenge on Britt Baker. I gotta go Big Swole. 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 Swole's a new moose song. <sighs> I can't do it because she's neither big nor swole. <laughs> So. <laughs> Whoa! All right, man. Don't be hating on Aaron. Uh, 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 like, uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna. I I, uh, I could easily, um, you know, defend that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> what? what you said. Um, the the definition of swole is apparently, if you're swole, you look good in anything. Swole is the goal, size is the prize. Yeah, it's also informally oh, extremely good. muscular. Yes. There you, go. there you go. Or a dialect form of swollen. What the? What? 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 <laughs> eh, that's what Google says. For, <laughs> for example, her anyway. eyes were so swollen you couldn't see what color they were. What the son of a bitch? So, so kind of like Rocky at the end. When his, when his yes, eyes are I all guess so. Up. Adrian! Why'd you pick that name? 
Mountain Mary. She, she, she's a little bit more muscular than most women. Like the definite, I wouldn't really say more muscular, but she's her muscles are more defined. Oh, I can see that than most females. And then there's Beyonce Belair. Got, and then she's got a big ass giant fucking forehead and a big ass gap between her eyes. But I digress. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, right, we right. have a bit Baker. Okay, that's one for Britt Baker. Travis, who are you saying? Two for Britt. Okay, we're split. And that, and that rhymes. The goal sizes. Yes, and Swole's the goal, size is the prize. It's gains a clock, motherfucker. Let's go, big Swole. I'm a Frank. Yeah, buddy. Uh, so due to them winning a tag match last night on Dynamite, that also rhymes. It's Jurassic Express versus the Young Bucks. Super kick pate! Young Bucks. See, I did have Jurassic nice. Express down originally, but I got a feeling Bucks are going to be looking... At, well, they were a little mean last night, and obviously they're still pissed at Paige, so I think I'm going to change to the Bucks as well. No. I'm, think, I'm thinking the Bucks I, I, myself, I, I, but I don't know. Like, Are you really going to just keep beating the crap out of the Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus like that? Well, I mean, I mean if they Sean get a Spears. win in a pay per view, is that going to kill the Bucks? I don't think so. It, I mean, they could kind of turn heel. That'd be cool. No, no. Uh, you got. I, I'm going the with the same direction as you, Dazzy, but I think they're going to get a little too heated, and they're either going to get themselves disqualified or they're going to get distracted on something else and Jurassic Express is going to pick up the win. All right. And Moses. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm going to go with Jurassic Express. I know it's the, not, the, the uh, you know, prediction title and all that jazz, but I'm just thinking, I'm like, do they like now is the time to like help build them. Like if they got a big win in a big pay-per-view, that tag team division seems even more, and then you can have them go on a giant rise and eventually beat, you know, FTR, who I'm pretty sure is going to win the belts. Uh, I'll keep the next one very simple. Dark Order defeat Mark Cardona, Scorpio Sky, and the Natural Nightmares. Oh, dude, Dark yep. Order all the way. <laughs> and I love always ready Matt Cardona, but I think QT Marshall is going to be taking the pin in this one. So I got to go Dark Order. Same. Whole house? No. There we go. Nightmares. <laughs> Well, you're going Cardona, Scorpio Sky, and the Natural Nightmares. Woo, woo, woo. He knows it, bro. Always. Oh, he can't do that. Anymore. He's always ready. Matt Cardona. Always ready. Matt Cardona. He's always standing around. I'm going to put it down as Team Nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they're a nightmare. All right. So, where we go? Oh, Broken Rules match. Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. So, it's basically a last man standing match. Um. And if Matt Hardy loses, he's got to leave AEW. I got to go with Matt Hardy. Yeah. Um, there is no way. There is no way Matt Hardy is going to be leaving AEW so soon. No, nah, I mean, how long was his contract? Or was it even permanent? He can always come back as his, one of his gimmicks. Eh. He already is running around. Oh, I'm not. I'm not these gimmicks anymore. I'm, I'm Matthew Hardy. I'm Matthew Hardy. It's like if he leaves, quote unquote. Back comes Damascus, or fucking. That's probably the only guy that kept good back, which is fine, because you know the fucking broken brilliance. I'm all about it. I can kind of see uh, that. Eh. I mean, with me, I look at Sam Guevara. He looks like the lost member of Menudo, for God's sake. And I don't, yep. don't get me wrong, dude's got talent, but he looks like the lost member of Menudo. And right now, he's kind of the whole. He's kind of like the weakest thing going on in uh, the inner circle. That is true. Okay. Give me now, Sammy. So that's one for Sammy. Now people are going to be Google searching what the hell Menudo was. Menudo was the group back in the 80s with the young Ricky Martin. I don't know Menudo. Before. But well, uh, yeah, it was Ricky Martin before he was living La Vida Loca. That's what I'm saying. Living La Vida Loca. But yeah, I got to go fucking <laughs> Matt Hardy, man. <laughs> Take your bon bon. All right. Uh, who in turn looked like the lost members of the Osmonds? Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Just updated a little bit. Yes. Oh, friggin' I'm a little bit country and I'm a little bit rock and It was roll, like man. Osmonds meets Greece. True. You got a good point on that. And now, now they're Googling the Osmonds. That's going even further back. Don't do it. Stop doing it right now. Stop doing <laughs> oh, it. Oh, God. Now everybody's going to start singing, One bad apple spoils the whole bunch, girl. See? Look what you did. Look what All you right, did. All let's, right, let's, let's, let's move on to the 21 man casino battle royale. Um, so far, we have confirmed Darby Allin, Lance Archer, Brian Cage, Ricky Starks, Pentagon Jr., Ray Phoenix, uh, Andy Williams, The Blade. Eddie Kingston, Sean Spears, Billy Gunn, Austin Gunn, Jake Hager, Santana, Ortiz, Chuck Taylor, and Trent. I got to go Everybody Dies, man. Lance Archer. I'm picking Brian Cage. Yeah, I want it. I'm I'm kind of with you, Daz. I'm like, I'm really thinking Brian Cage, but Archer has not been on, like, television in a while, and I Fuck it, give me Cage. Because, like, I... Yeah, because Archer hasn't been on TV like that. He's just been killing dudes in the back. Yeah. Or, or, or Ricky still Stark great. to be a bit of a dark horse. I do like that. I'd, you ready I'd for this? I'd love to see Eddie Kingston versus Mark, so... If Mark retains. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, Travis, who you got? Sean Spears. No. You. Yep. Go back to watching your squirrels. It's totally, <laughs> your it's totally still with him because he's just with FTR now, apparently. Yes. No, they didn't even explain him getting away from Tully Blanchard. They just what said, the hell is that all... fucking symbol? No. What the fuck is this? Did did y'all not see uh, Tully totally walk symbol? out with Sean last night? No. No. I could, oh, I'm yeah, swear... yeah, he walked across the stage, yeah. Yeah. Like a creeping Jesus. Mm-hmm. You got to start building that faction that they're trying to build. Oh, with hey, FGR, you know, the, the, the two and the pink, one and the stink thing. Yeah, yeah the hand yeah, symbol. I'm sure that was a fortune symbol. Yeah, so fortune four. Yeah. I love fortune. I did too. It's kind of, I kind of feel like it's kind of like a teaser to the four horsemen. Yeah. And because you got FTR, so that's two. And then you got uh, Sean Spears, that's three. So who's little ring finger day? Yeah, well, I mean, of course, the uh, fortune was kind of based on the four horsemen. They had Ric Flair originally as the manager. And they had Desmond Wolf in there, which I did enjoy seeing Nigel in that group. Yeah, Desmond Wolf was underrated. That's the thing, man. He gets hurt. Him and Ma- Magnus were a great tag team. And then friggin', you know, nothing. Nothing. And do you remember even how they got that tag title shot that they had back in the day, man? Because they won a match on Explosion, which nobody <laughs> fucking watches. But we're supposed to be like, oh my god, they won on Explosion, they're going for the tag titles. Nobody watches that shit. They make Explosion and still a thing. It is still a thing, and I don't get why it's still a thing, because nobody fucking watches it. More people watch Spin Cycle. Oh, the days of the Spin Cycle, man. <laughs> yes. Yeah, JV all day, every day. You go, Des. Um, all right, so that's everybody for that one. Uh, where we go? How about want to go women's yeah, title? That's exactly, that's exactly what I got listed next the women's <laughs> championship. Uh, Hikuru, Hikaru Shida versus Thunder Hikaru. Rosa. I, yeah, I went, I always you pronounce it Hikaru Shida. I was gonna pronounce it the way, um, Hikaru. What's her name? Shida. Dasha pronounces it Hikaru. <laughs> Uh, Hikaru Shida versus Thunder Rosa for the AEW Women's Championship. Thunder Rosa is, of course, the NWA Women's World Champion. They they mm-hmm. kind of drop the world every now and then as well in AEW. Sometimes it's the Women's World, sometimes it's World Women's, sometimes it's just Women's. But the Women's World Championship. Uh, I I'm gonna go Thunder Rosa. That would be a nice tie-in to bring AW, uh, NWA guys in. Hmm. Interesting. Because also, it wouldn't be the first person to uh, hold a championship from a different company. But in AEW, they, you know, they, like Kenny Omega, for example, has had titles with, from Mexico. 
Mox has had the mm-hmm. IWGP US title, so why not have an NWA wrestler have an AEW title? Like I said, good bridging gap. I am so torn on this. So beyond torn on this. Like, I, I have no clue how it, how it's going to go. Damn, I really like the idea, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I really I, do. I really want to go uh, Thunder Rosa. Oh, man, I freaking love her. I've actually had the pleasure of meeting her. And she is such a nice freaking woman. And So completely different from my game. I love Cheetah. Oh, man, I don't know. Also, if Sheeda uh, retains and is champion for another month, she will be the longest reigning women's champion in AEW. Give me Sheeta just because I'm thinking they really want to pay off the whole conspiracy thing that Britt Baker loves to talk about, and it'll be her and, and Britt for the belt at some point, hopefully soon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Sheeta. All right, and right, Mike. Yeah, that's a tough one. You really yeah. want to see it go either way. Yeah. I think for me, like seeing Thunder Rosa from her days in Lucha Underground as Cobra Moon, and then you have her and Holiday right. as the Twisted Sisters, Serpentine, and Wow Women of Wrestling. Like for me, you have a great talent in Thunder Rosa, and of course the MMA fight you have with Combates Americas. And, uh, yeah, man, I, I love me some Thunder Rosa, man, NWA Women's Champ. Then you got Akaru Shida, who's just been killing it. Uh, between the two, it is a tough one, like you guys mentioned. But I, too, like Mr. Travis, will go Hikaru Shida to retain the AEW Women's Championship. And Moses. And me, too. <laughs> uh, so, as of today, uh, Shida has held the title call for two days more than Nyla Rose. And like I said, she's exactly 30 days behind Riho. Speaking of her, what the hell is up with Nyla Rose? They did the thing with her and Vicky Guerrero, and now where the hell is she? Oh, I thought you meant speaking of Riho. Where the hell's Riho? Oh, that too, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, hey, well, for me, I was happy last night because we got Serena Deeb with yeah. Thunder Rosa, and I thought that was awesome. Yeah, Jay, I was singing her praises. Oh, my God, the former Straight Edge Society. We're talking about Shimmer. She was in the Mae Young Classic. Girls got it going on, fo yes. I mean, come on, man. She was in TNA when friggin' Mickey James and Magnus were feeding with James Storm off the fucking train tracks, Dazzy Dangerous. Murder. We're not just not going to mention off the train tracks. I love Murder it. on TV. Murder was the case that they gave him, and he's not innocent. Okay, tag team title match. The dysfunctional Kenny Omega and Adam Page defending against FTR with Tully Blanchard. Say yeah! Oh, yeah, it gotta be new champs. Or FTR. The Mid-Atlantic boys right again. FTR. Uh, interference from Young Bucks or no? Yeah, absolutely <laughs> interference from the Bucks. Absolutely. Especially if they lose. Especially if they lose. Uh, I love what they did last night when Paige picks up both belts and he holds one out for Kenny. And then the camera turns around and Kenny's out of the ring. Kenny's like halfway to the fucking back. <laughs> also like, love Kenny's dude. t-shirt. Uh, to yes. Or I've got rest her soul. the boy, Kenny. Um, yeah, so full house for FTR. I mean, jeez, Paige and uh, Omega won the titles on the cruise, which was way back when, uh, mm-hmm. January. So they've been champions for 226 plus days. Woo. Uh, wow. Eclipsing SCU's original record of 83. <laughs> well, <laughs> you don't say. Uh, okay. Seems like a bigger number. Much bigger. Okay. Uh, I mean, they've been dysfunctional the whole time as well. It's crazy that they've held it for that long. They did kind of patch things up, but then Paige got a little too drunk last week. (laughs) Got a little too drinky drinky. Speaking of getting drunk, this brings us to the Mimosa Mayhem match. The match can be won by pinfall, submission, or by throwing the opponent into a tank of Mimosa, which is obviously going to be the end result. Chris Jericho versus Orange Cassidy. 
I'm sorry, but the name of that match, it's just, it's stupid, but it's funny it's, as it's fuck. It's stupid you know, if only Jericho could make it work. True, very true. <laughs> but it's funny as fuck. All right. Uh, for the payoff here and the blow-off, I got to go OC in the building. Orange Cassidy. Yeah, I mean, can we... Can we? I don't mean to interrupt. Can we just acknowledge the fact that I want to say, what was it, like a year ago or whatever, Jericho says one stupid line, a little bit of the bubbly, and it's gotten to the point where now this fucking guy not only had his own goddamn champagne, he's got all kinds of fucking shirts and shit, they're going to have a fucking match featuring sh- the bubbly. Yeah. Yep. Jericho like, can um, turn a simple sentence into gold. Uh, I'm wearing the T-shirt right now as we speak. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's what I'm saying. It's just, it's yeah, brilliant. And, Absolute and brilliance. I've been waiting. I have been waiting all day hey, to, for us to mention Chris Jericho. What about fucking Joey Janela sailing the hell out of that code breaker last time? Oh, that was oh, a wow, beautiful finish. Oh. Uh, but I still just can't stomach Joey Janela. No, not at all. But damn, he sold the fuck yeah. out of that, and it was a, it was the best sale I've seen in a long time. Um, I see two possible outcomes for this match. Or oh, he laid dead in the ropes. <laughs> uh, first of all, the first possible outcome I see is obviously Cassidy winning. Um, because I just picture Jericho in a tank, and I don't picture Orange Cassidy in it. Second outcome right. is Jericho pinning. Cassidy, and then Cassidy just throws him in the tank anyway. So either way, Jericho ends up in the mimosa. As he should. Uh, And the second one seems more likely to me, but I also think Cassidy should win. Eh. I'm going to go with a second outcome. Jericho wins and Orange Cassidy throws him in the mimosa anyway. (laughs) <laughs> uh, if, if Jericho wins and Orange Cassidy gets thrown in, I can see it now. Him just like floating on top, just chilling. <laughs> <laughs> but I got, I gotta go, Christian. Uh, sorry, uh, Orange Cassidy for the win. Oh yeah, Orange would be that one guy. Oh, I'm just gonna hang out in here. Oh, why aren't you mad? I'm just chilling. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, I. Uh, it's got to be. It's got to be Cassidy, because like, I mean, at this point, Jericho's just what he's got to be putting people over. He's not in the title match scene. I don't know if he's gonna ever go back there. It looks like the inner circle is just going downhill, so you might as well take him a little bit down with you. I mean, it's not like it's gonna hurt him. Well, I mean, even Jericho said it on his like Saturday Night Lives that he's been doing. He did, said it like over a month ago, I think how he's excited to make Orange Cassidy one of the biggest stars in the world by putting him over. So, I mean, I think this is just going to be that icing on the cake for it. There you go. And now I'm having second thoughts. (laughs) We we are the mind changers. (laughs) Uh, Screw it, I'll go back to my original prediction of Cassidy as well. Attaboy. Attaboy. <laughs> when we're all wrong, we're going to fucking be kicking ourselves. Yes. And I'm going to be like, damn it. Those bastards. Hey, hey uh, just take it out on, or just have the shape take it out on Moses Slater. <laughs> hey, 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 now don't be bringing out the thunder that you don't want. <laughs> all right, main event. Um, AW World Championship. Mox is banned from using a paradigm shift. I still say he's going to win with a gotch pile driver. Yeah. He's going to add to the neck injury factor. I mean, I definitely think MGF waited long enough, but I've got Mox as well for some reason. There's got to be something about the paradigm shift being banned that's just not going to affect him winning. That's what I'm saying. He's got his arsenal's too big. I don't, I mean, I, I really do love the idea of MJF being world champion. Just not right now. Just not right now, because I, I think the only guy that should, or there's actually two guys, that should be taken, that should take down Moxley is either Hangman 
or Omega. I also look at the the Battle Royal. There's like one big baby face in there, so it, mm-hmm. it can't be like Darby Allen versus Mox again. So it's got to be a heel winning the Battle Royal. So it can't be MJF winning the title. Exactly. But I don't know. Who knows? Maybe maybe they're just that infatuated with MGF because I mean I am. Like I said, I would I love the idea of it, but it's just too early. Ne- by next year, if he's world champ, I'm all about it. Uh, yeah, I mean that that's I got I, I'm torn on this one as well. Oh, for the simple fact, okay, uh, MJF is undefeated, right? So is Mox, Okay, right? so... No. no. But but who better to beat him than the world champ? I I know, but I I keep... When I see MJF, I see EC3. <laughs> and... I can see that. All I can think of is EC3 being undefeated and winning the title. But... EC3 did it. Uh, with good timing, I don't. I, I'm with you, Moses. I think it's too soon um, for MJF, but I don't know. He can win it right. He can win it at the next fucking pay per view. I think, which even. makes sense it, because at that point, double or nothing. Just saying that there's just it. It just doesn't yeah. line. No, it don't because like let let's say Lance Archer wins the battle royal. Oh, please! At, like, can you honestly see Lance Archer versus MJF? No, he'd be murdered. I'm sorry, I love MJF, but he would be murdered. Now, now him and Mox, they'd go to fucking war, and uh, they would not apologize for the bloodshed. <laughs> Right, Mike. You're you're quiet. What do you think? He's just pondering his life away. Are you gonna go left field with MJF? I was originally because we're both from Long Island, but no, we're not gonna <laughs> do that. Uh, I mean, it's one of those things where when you look at MJF, just his gimmick, the whole nine. I love MJF to death. He's one of those guys. He's so young, but he's got it like that. He's got oozes charisma, and he's a great worker. Mm-hmm. For me, I also look at it like this. Like you mentioned, John Moxley. I remember when John Cena was the WWE champion, two thousand five. He had that submission match with Chris Masters, and he first brought out the STFU in that particular matchup because John Cena did not have a finishing move. So you get to have that creative aspect with it, and John Moxley gets to add another maneuver to his thing, whether it be a rear naked choke, what have you. I could see John Moxley getting the win it doesn't have to necessarily be with the paradigm shift or there could be some screw job with it where he winds up using the move but the ref doesn't see it so for me i gotta say mox retains in this particular situation i mean he could go his original finisher because before oh, the, they changed the dirty original, deeds to a double arm ddt yes which was the yeah. old um, one percenter that ec3 used to use that headlock driver yep the plethora of moves this man could be using that is true Super kick, as we saw on his own wife. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so what, what, what's the tally here? Is that everybody for Mox? Mike? I think so. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck well, it, I'll go Mox. I meant to say this, and I'm going to say this right now. The fact that I love Mark Sterling as well because of what he's done with Limitless Wrestling. I love the fact that he is smart Mark, Mark Sterling. You know what I'm saying? I do enjoy that dude a lot, Mark Sterling. Oh. Man. Right. What? Imagine being forced into the ring by Lance Archer. Oh. <laughs> not, not even forced into the ring, thrown onto the stage <laughs> by Lance Archer. Um, hey, you were the one popping over there, Mr. Moses Marquez, for Smart Mark Sterling. That's right. I was about to say, somebody <laughs> said Smart Mark the other day on RWT. I was like, excuse me, he said something. Yeah, he's very the only big. one. He's very big on the Northeast wrestling scene. He's had a couple great matches with Kristen Statlander on the Indies. Two! Uh, well, that's all out. And we kind of skipped over NXT, but of course there wasn't really that much to talk about because the second hour of the show was just one match. Um, so quick mm-hmm. results for the first hour. Um, Legado 
take a loss to Breeze Angle and Swerve. Candice defeats Katie Calanzaro and then invites Tegan Knox to dinner. And Thatcher defeats Bronson Reed after interference from Austin Theory. Hold. Pause. Hold yeah, it. It's, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I love each and everything that you're saying here, but the thing that really piqued my interest was now that we're going to get Rhea Ripley and Mercedes Martinez in a steel cage. Oh, that too. Yeah, hell. And we're not going to shit all over the fact that every time there's a, uh, like a, well, I don't know, this was like a six man. Why were these, why was El Legado del Fantasma? Why were they like dressed for street fights? Everybody got because jeans it was and street shit. Fight. It was a street oh, was fight. it a street fight? Well, then what yeah. the hell was? Is it like mandatory to wear fucking jeans on a goddamn street fight? Yes. <laughs> they are then, doing. Fucking Joaquin they're... Wilde with his goddamn fucking <laughs> glitter glove looking like Michael I'm... Jackson, the Mexican version. I'm more second, confused why the hell there was a forklift at ringside. Take it down. Thank you. That's the <laughs> safest fucking thing I've ever seen. I have a forklift license that is against OSHA. <laughs> Take it down for a second. Sip it down there, Moses Marquez. You know what he's doing? They're channeling their inner Michael McDonald and Doobie Brothers. They're taking it to the streets. That's what they're doing. It's simple, man. It's well, simple. What they want to do is the... take it to the moon. Take it to know. the moon, Cameron Rhymes. Yep. Oh, uh, I just wanted so... to crap on it real quick. <laughs> Now, when, when did I feel like Austin Theory was on Raw? I thought he, he was. was he was with, he was, and then with, with the whole shit happened, that happened, so we got moved back to NXT. He started yeah. playing with teenagers. Basically. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to stand behind that. Line. I don't care. <laughs> and that's exactly why Bronson leads to Bronson reads fucking slaps his face out of his mouth. When, it, <laughs> when Austin Theory came out, I was so confused. I was really tired when I was watching it, <laughs> and I thought it was Ricky Stark. I'm like <laughs> the invasion has. I was like the invasion has begun. Holy shit! <laughs> oh man! You know that's not a bad guy to throw to and the invasion. They're not even on the same <laughs> nights anymore. I know, but I was so damn confused. <laughs> Okay, I can actually. Uh, you got it. You got it. You got to admit they do look similar. Absolutely. Well, they have a similar body type. Yes. Because I, I, agree. I always used to get confused between Madman Fulton and Lance Archer. Yes. I, I still yep. do. <laughs> <laughs> it's still. But yeah, I know. But that was another thing because Moses Marquez got very hyped on that. I know you were enjoying Bronson Reed putting a whooping on that ass. Yeah, Thick okay. boy. Thick boy. Thick boy doing his stuff. I'm uh, I don't. I'm gonna make a horrible joke. I don't know. They they send him back to NXT because they don't really mind criminal records. Oh. Hey. No. Hey. Damn. Sorry, Hunter. Damn. But is he wrong though? Damn. <laughs> but is he wrong though? No, he's not. <laughs> oh, that was borderline. Borderline. Uh, they 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 tow in the line. Yes. Um. So, basically, there's a rumor going around that uh, they're gonna permanently move NXT to Tuesday nights because ratings no suffer on a Wednesday because AEW. Do it. Uh, and what did they get this well, week, Mike? Eight eight four nine. Eight hundred and forty nine thousand on the Tuesday. See, it's working. Do it. Stay on Tuesdays. That also means I don't have to watch two shows at the same time because I have to watch Impact the next day anyway because it's limited exactly. viewability. Well, here's the thing where I, with what I get with my uh, with my cable, man. I get friggin' uh, USA 31 for NXT, and then I hop on over to 88 and back and forth with Access TV, so it's a win-win. Yeah, I mean, the gimmick was nice for 90s kids to flip back and forth between two shows, i.e. the Monday mm-hmm. Night War, but... Let's face it, that generation is more into AEW, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. There we are, baby. So, main event of NXT was, of course, the 60-man Iron Man match, Fatal 4-Way, which was great, but the result kind of pissed a lot of people off. Yeah, and now we're going to get Adam Cole and Skinny Finney next week. Finn, it's fine. Finn was literally 12 seconds away from being champion again. Mm-hmm. And um, we'll fucking say when when well, when Cole couldn't flip him over onto his back, I thought that was going to be the finish. He's going to struggle to even the score, but he got it. It literally the last millisecond. Mm-hmm. 
So what you're saying is trying to put him on his back. So you're saying he was pulling the camera and trying to figure out how to pin somebody is what you're saying? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Why aren't you counting? Because she's face down. You stupid <laughs> biatch. So was it, was it just me or were they kind of like making Tommaso Ciampa look weak? They they did something that I hate I don't wanna... in these long ass multi man matches where half the people in the match spend half the match sleeping outside the ring. Mm-hmm. Yep. It was like but still though, like throughout the entire hour of it, they were basically just beating the shit out of Tommaso. They were. They were trying to like neutralize him or whatever, yeah. which I understood, but it was like it was yeah, it, it drove me fucking nuts. Yeah. I was yeah, like, this guy came back. Killed... Why is he not killing everybody? Exactly. He's the That's freshest out saying. of all of you. But he got the worst beating out of any of them. I mean, the great thing was we had that little bullet club moment between Balor and Cole, yes. and then they end up being Jesus. tied at the end. <laughs> You effed sweet it. Desi Unfortunately, we didn't get a DIY moment, though. Oh, Even well, though they're both heels now. Well, <laughs> I think for me, like, a lot of people had the problem with the finish, but I'm like, oh, I'm okay with it. We get Adam Cole and Skinny Finney next week. I'm good with it. I'm cool with it for one reason, and it definitely smells like the turn. Not the turn. The, uh, the kicking him out of uh, out of UE is, is coming. I feel like this is the time. Yeah. Now really? is the time. I'm thinking Kyle O'Reilly's going to screw him. I've been saying this for weeks. Like they, I feel one minute they were face, one minute they're they're heel. This guy goes in there that he's quote unquote wasting his time with this football player. They put on a good ass. He puts on a good ass match anyway. But O'Reilly had to come back, slap sense into these guys, wake the fuck up. And now he's. You know, I'm, I think he's going to cost him. He's like, you know what, dude? You're not. You're not leader material no more. And they may be. Maybe, just maybe, we could fucking finally get the Kyle O'Reilly singles run that I've been dying for. Yeah, O'Reilly's so, looking like a boss. So you want to see it kind of like when they when Kenny Omega and all of them kicked Adam Cole out of the Bullet Club in ROH? Bingo. Baby. Baby. <laughs> you know, without the Marty Skrull part of the, you know. Be- yeah, yes. because Marty Skrull also, also should belong in NXT. <laughs> yep. I was going to say, I was like, he's got his own issues, this fucking guy. By the way, speaking of someone that we've seen on all brands, did you also see – here's what I thought was interesting because we mentioned AWA before with the women's style match. I did also see that one Mike Bennett wrestled Nick Aldis for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Yes. What in the but world? But did he win? No. Yeah. No. No, he did Somebody not. gave that guy a job? Yes. He was on NWA wrestling Nick Aldis for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, we're ta- oh, oh, speaking about, we're talking about all these like new people showing up in places. Can we give it up for the uh, what is it? The former, what the fuck is his name? Um, who the hell was Titus O'Neil's partner? Is oh, Darren Young. Like, yeah, Darren. Darren Young's going to show up on Friday for New Japan Strong. Ooh. See, that's good because he can actually wrestle, and a lot of people forget that. And also because the last time we saw him, we were going to make Darren Young great again. So I mean, hey. Oh yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I w- I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna lie. I was excited for it because I said, you know what? If you're gonna give this guy a fucking push, let's fucking do it. I'm down. I mean, I, I'm not a. Uh, I can't stay a fucking Bob Backlund. I have my own issues with him on the fucking retro shows. Yeah. Just trying to run for president, and he's Don't just. Hate this is not, what, I, I can't even get into it. It's just terrible. But the point is, is like they tried, and he got the three week treatment, and then he was gone. And now it's like, and now I can't wait to see him do some work. Cannot wait. Going back to Nick Aldis, he's been champion ever since he took the title back off Cody. Well, that's who else are you going to have in NWA be the champion, man? Like, come on, everybody's leaving that goddamn place anyway. They got no more Ziggy Starks. They got friggin' no more Ziggy Starks. Ricky Starks. Ziggy they got Starks. no friggin' no more Ziggy Dice. <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy D- they got Ziggy Dice, man. They, they got people living that promotion. Uh, Who the Dick hell is it? Give, give the title to Dick Murdoch. Uh, reincarnation. Where the hell is he? I'm trying to find that. Out. I mean, he's been champion for 600 something days. All right. Now this is gonna bug it's... me because now I got to see the NWA roster. Combined, Nick Aldis is the ninth uh, longest reigning NWA World Champion over two reigns. But I'm trying to find out what number he is in one single reign. 
Uh, a bounce. Solid a question. I think his ninth single reign as well. Mm. Mm. Maybe. Cool. Perhaps. All right. Cool. All right, here's what they got to figure been around. Okay, so the NWA... Trevor Nash... Murdoch. There you go. Give it to Trevor Murdoch. The former Jethro Holiday. Oh, God. No, hold on. All right, here's who's on the damn roster. They got Aaron fucking Stevens as the NWA National Heavyweight Champ. You got... Okay, well, this one I like. Caleb Conley. You got um, Dave Dawson. E.Y. Drake and James Storm are the NWA World Tag Champs. They got Homicide. Jax Dane. Remember that was the one that was in Veterans of War with Crimson and Impact for a little bit, Dazzy Dangerously? No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Jose- <laughs> Josephus. Uh, you got Matt Cross, the former Sons of ha- Son of Havoc. You got Matthew Mims, whoever the fuck that is. Mr. Anderson, Nick Aldis, Ricky Morton and fucking Robert Gibson, Royce Isaacs, Sal Renaro, who's in Ring of Honor, Scott Steiner, Bram, Tim Storm, Trevor Murdoch, and Zane Dawson. And for Trevor the fe- Murdoch. Yes. And for the females, you got Allison K, Ashley Vox, who was a part of Team C Stars, who was great. Uh, Camille, who's the valet of Nick Aldis, Marty F. and Bell, Molina, and Thunder Rosa. Jack Stane's a former world champion as well. All right. So yeah, let, let's see let's see if uh Larkin can guess it. Who do you think I would want to become the champ and take down Nick Aldis? Looking at people that are on this roster? Mr. Yeah. Andrew? No. <laughs> James Storm? <laughs> Eli Drake. Eli Drake. Oh, Caleb nope. Conley. Sorry. Either Caleb Conley or Zane Dawson. Okay, is it that you with that goddamn the North Carolina team, the friggin' the original revolt? Yes. The, see? See? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Al, okay, you, you have no idea. Man, you were so bowed up when they started calling themselves the revolt because they are not going to do that to Caleb Conley and Zane Dawson. You are not going to stand for this. You were like, oh, no, man. Oh, were- man. I, I was so bothered. I was so bothered by it because there is only one revolt, man. There is only one revolt. Yeah, well, Travis is big like how I am with the NYWC. He's a big AML guy, so I hear you. Hey, you got to respect your home Mandy's, man. I know, man. I mean, freaking Kristen Statlander wrestled there in, for a Twitch show when, when Twitch was making yeah. a pitch for Impact back in the I'll say my local indie is a PCW, nice. Pacific Coast Wrestling. So I get to see all kinds of great lucha and shit. Is that the one PCW Ultra and all that good stuff? Yep. Yeah, buddy. It good for twenty five bucks. They put on a fucking killer show. That they do. So yeah, Daz. Now you know what about the indies over here in America. All right. Or if I want to be a, an even cheaper <laughs> bastard, I can go to fucking Mexico and go to like the Crash or something. All right. I feel like I talked about it on the show before, but I can't remember. All right, so Dazzy, just to refresh the memory, remember Sheamus and Cesaro in the bar fight? Yeah. Hey, all the guys that was in that bar, it was filmed in Charlotte, North Carolina, and the guys in the bar was the revolt. Yeah, of course, they all live next door to Trap. <laughs> <laughs> Well, also, you got to give Caleb Conley some love because he is dating the lovely Miss Kristen Statlander. Nice, dude. He he's he's fucking badass. I, I've seen a lot of his matches in well, person. It never disappoints. He is really great. It amazes me he hasn't made it to WWE or anything like that yet. Well, he was with Trevor Lee, Cameron Grimes, and Impact when they were a team, but that was about it. They didn't use him yeah. to his potential. So so what you're saying, Mike, is Caleb Conway is probing Conway. an alien. Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. All right. That Conway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Well, where Kristen Statlander lived on Long Island, I lived in East Islip. She lived in West Islip. She was about 10 You're trying to tell me she's not an alien? <laughs> well, that's what's great about her because her okay. gimmick. Hey, she's a well, alien. have you ever seen Men in Black? <laughs> uh, it's true. Yes, here comes Men in Black. But no, that's the thing about it. What's great about the gimmick is because she's basing the alien character over something that she loves, and with the whole galaxies and stuff, she's a big astrology get person. Yeah, so it makes sense. Men in Black. All the aliens live in New York. Yeah, yeah. there you go. 
<laughs> just bounce with me. Just bounce with me. Yep. Hey, well, that would that would explain a lot about Michael Larkin. Yeah, Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this the second week in a row we've had a fucking Will Smith reference? Yes. <laughs> just want to bring that up. Hold on. Wait a minute. First and foremost, I am not from New York City. I am from Long Island, sir. Like Chef is not from Queens in the city. He's from Long Island. But Chef is in denial, and he just won't admit that he's from Long Island. You know what I'm saying? And like Brittany Savage not admitting the fact that she's from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, and lived there for three years, and it doesn't fucking count. So, I mean, it's one of those things where I'm not from the city. Hey, I'm from the suburbs. So I'm the white boy from suburbia land, to quote Cole Cabana, when he was shooting with Homicide, but, ROH, and he was rapping. So you are from the state of New York. That is true, but I don't live in New York City. I'm just saying, because it's a whole lot of, they call me the Don Dada. It's one of the things where I'm the white boy from suburbia land. I'm not from the New York City and the human cesspool that is. You don't know nothing about no chopped cheese. I don't, and I'm not from that other cesspool, New Jersey. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> it's all right, no goddamn Guido. I, sh- no. I sure hope there's no New Jerseyans listening. Uh, first and foremost, here's the thing. Yo, don't go to Newark alone. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's okay. A lot of our audience are in India. They don't care. <laughs> My goodness gracious, I love me some India. <laughs> okay, but the guy, I'm not going to do the accent, but the guy on the Impact Wrestling Media calls the comments calls every single time, how many times, and it's like we get it, because it became a recurring joke where it's just like, no. We don't know when we're coming back to India. Because every time the guy would come on and say, come back to India, and it's Does like, Does the dude know no. there's a pandemic going on? I know. Yeah. But uh, not now, but back in the day, he used to do that too. Every time it would be, come back to India. We don't know we're coming back to India. Come back to India. We don't know we're coming back to India. But we're going to come back to India, but we don't know when you we're coming back to India. So. Impact get this all the time with the roster. Come back to WWE, but we're doing better in Impact. Come back to WWE. But we're doing better in Impact. <laughs> but look at the money. Look at the money. <laughs> By but the then, way, speaking of Pete Bennett, because he was... Go ahead, there's, sorry. Then there's people who reply, if you miss them so much, just watch them on Impact. Nah, I only watch WWE. Well, that's your problem. Uh, yeah. That's the problem. Right. And I, that's, I think that's the problem. And I'll come back to that for a second. But since Travis brought up MJP and EC3, Mike Bennett was the one that ended EC3's undefeated streak in Impact. Son of a bitch. Yes, he was. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and then also, <laughs> but what, like like you mentioned, I think that's the problem with a lot of wrestling fans. Everybody's just stuck to, in their own bubble with WWE fans and everything. Yeah. Like Broaden the horizon, man. The WWE bubble is hell. They would be the people that would cheer Mansoor going to fucking Saudi Arabia. You know what I'm saying? The goddamn Mansoor. Who, by the way, if he was on Raw or SmackDown, he would be jobbed the fuck out. But when it comes to bringing him over to Saudi Arabia, we got to make him look good. Oh, he's beating Cesaro. Oh, he's... And he's a Jetta! And he's beating fucking Elias. And it's like, if this was on American soil, he would not be getting this. But it feels so good to be back in Riyadh. And I like Mansoor. Well, didn't he get a freaking win on NXT? He has, and he's got wins on 205 when he was friggin', friggin' feuding with Tony Miles. 205 still a thing. There you go. So he has gotten wins on Fucking American soil. <laughs> Miles. Friggin' Tahuti listens to Hootie. I only want to be with you. Fucking, I hate that name. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, that's. I don't know. I don't know where the hell we went to then, but we've already finished uh, <laughs> AEW. <laughs> Right off the fucking so, find out who walks away with the promo championship on Monday, as they will be defending against the three finalists of the promo bowl in the microphone standoff. Microphone standoff like a rhinestone cowboy. On November 19th at Promo Series 5 Enemy Lines. You know what? If that wasn't copyrighted, that would be a hell of a theme song. Yes! Glenn Campbell up in this bitch. <laughs> Uh, in the traditional winner stays on gauntlet, the Phoenix will also be defending the Knowledge Championship up to three times if he can survive the first two challenges, and one of his opponents is confirmed to be Moses Marquez. The the that ain't going away, bro. The feud continues. <laughs> oh, but there's more. Moses also has promo duty as it's his turn to face the shape in what would normally be a promo exhibition, but in the spirit of things, let's call it a duel at sundown. Duel at Sundown. And to finish things off, there's another duel at Sundown. Between the undefeated 
Brittany Savage, and the incomparable Michael Arkin. Thank you. I look forward to doing that, man. There's going to be a lot of singing. There's going to be a lot of pop culture. There is going to be some seriousness. And dare I say, it's going to get savage, pun intended. I look forward to it. I would expect nothing less. From, Hell a, from to a the Mike Larkin anthology. Yo, there's nothing wrong with the anthologies. That was a badass CD, by the way. Three CDs all in one, then now and forever. The original, then now and forever. Hell to the yeah. But anyway, I digress. Man, you got someone like Britney Savage in the history that we have. We're talking about the Northeast Independent Wrestling Circuit. We are talking about the NYWC. We're talking about WSU. We are talking about a whole lot of when it comes to Long Island and the fact that she's a fake from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, but oh. I digress. But it's also one of the... <laughs> It's also one of what? those things where it's going to be good, and I'm done. And, of course, good. the predictions title will be on the line for TakeOver and Survivor Series. We skipped payback because fuck that shit. Uh, for more information, go to matchwrestlinguk.weebly.com. Chad really wasn't happy that we skipped payback because Emma's still got his championship at home. Wait a minute, hold on. Wait, he oh, gets he'll get it. Hold it, hold, hold <laughs> up, man. We got till September 27th, Chad. Clash of Champions. Clash of Champions. True. We got this week. Yeah, we got all we out. We just this week. predicted all out. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, well, he's talking about that, but we also got Clash of Champions at the end of the month. So we got a couple more weeks before we got to predict I mean, another. Got it's not just Emma that's got the belts. Um, Kenny and the Phoenix are also currently co predictions champions. Champions. Yo, Phoenix. Go Phoenix. And the bell has rung and it's time for us to bid you adieu. So before we go, remember to like and follow Max Wrestling on Facebook. It's Max Wrestling UK on Twitter, YouTube and Instagram. We're also on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio and CastBox. Cast Bizarre! Lee. Get there it, John Moxley. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> if that wasn't enough, you can always find us on Wrestling with Wrestling. Thank you to Andre Corbeil. Go give him a subscription on YouTube. And you can find me at the Captain 512 You can find Travis at Walker underscore TA92. And Twitch no longer makes you dick itch. So don't be a wanker. Go check out Anchor with El Jefe. I love that so much. <laughs> I know it's the best. That's damn right. Check out, uh, check us all out at SMR Podnet, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all over Anchor. Same places too: uh, Google Play, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, the whole nine yards. Um, the Twitch stuff is taking a small bit of a break just because we're trying to ramp up retro. And then, speaking of Clash of the Cha- uh, Clash of Champions, if you want to watch some original WCW Clash of the Champions. Um, Paul has actually finally made his return. Uh, he he and I are going to be dropping an episode Monday. It's an all actually it already dropped I should say an all WCW episode episode fifty for Retro Rewind. We did Clash of the Champions and the following Nitro part dwa and for those you know eighties heads of the Mike's like what in the fuck are you talking about? Back in the day, Mike, there used to be weird movies. It would just be like uh, I can't remember one of them, but it would just be like rather than like part two, it'd be part dwa. Yeah. So that's what I'm calling it. Retro Rewind uh, episode 50, part 3. We're going to do uh, SummerSlam 1996 and then that follow-up Raw. So it's going to be Shawn Michaels and Vader is going to be the big match looking into that one. For example, all kinds of fun stuff. Charlie Sheen, Hot Shots, part 3. Hey, that's the one I was thinking of, <laughs> Hot Shots. Isn't that like a part 2? Isn't there like a part 2 too? D-E-U-X or is it part 3? Yeah, it sounds better that. when you say 3. Yeah, okay. it does. It's, it's like it's like the death metal band Guar. You can't say Guar. It's Guar. Guar. <laughs> yes. And I emphasize. Finally, Mike, who you been talking to? You guys can check out my latest on the mic with Mike with adult star Mandy Maytay. It was a oh, fun I think. Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> so it's a whole lot of man with Mandy Maytag. You got more of the LFC podcast coming. Check me out on soundcloud.com slash mclarkin92, stevenmikeshow.com, smshow1, mcl92, pop underscore culture underscore pod on Twitter. And if you're an Impact fan at Impact Rewind on the Twitter machine, check me out with Andre Corbeil on Wrestling Wrestling Show, wrestlingwrestling.com, laundryfc.com for beauty, strength, and dominance. The three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. You know me, man. I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere. Just type in Mike Larkin, go to SM Show 1, you get your whole website deal, you get your Laundry FC, a Laundry FC on the Twitter machine. Just look me up on there, and you can always check me out on the Max Wrestling Podcast. We take it to the max. Yeah. Well, I got Laundry FC, do the right thing. 
Mike, yes. I gotta get a sound bite. So every time you say LFC, it's just Katie Forbes going, Hey Hey right? <laughs> Maybe not. No. <laughs> Next week. No. Next week the promo bowl continues as four more combatants step into the promo dome. First up is Cypher and the Phoenix. I believe they faced in the promo league. Yes, they did. Yep. And Phoenix beat Cypher. Cypher's coming back to get the win. And Revenge that time. is followed by two relatively newcomers. We've seen Ronald Hill once, but he makes his second appearance against debutante Chris Durham. Oh, not Chris Durham. Moneymaker. Moneymaker Chris, Chris Durham. Oh. I don't want that baseball bat around my skull. Right. <laughs> and that's a little preview of his promo. That, my friends, is the bottom line. Goodbye. And good night. Bang. Open Adios. up the goddamn donut shop. I want some donuts with Edge. Yeah, I'm going to go get some. <laughs> Don't eat it, you motherfucker. Just get Edge, I get want edge to donut. sign it. I want a donut. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be. <laughs>